Uh, here we're looking at, at two different data series, and, we and they're both heading to the, towards the same state. If we expose the GCL to the leachate, allow it to come to equilibrium, a stable, a stable situation, and then we increase the effective stress, we're going to drop the permeability, let it come to equilibrium again, increase the effective stress, lower permeability, and or if we run an individual series of tests, starting with the same stresses uh, directly applied to the specimen, we're, we're always heading down in permeability. So the more waste you place on that lining system, the lower you're going to drive that permeability. That said, we want to start those programs and testing programs at a relatively low stress, the stress at, at which th that uh, product's going to encounter the leachate. Uh, typically, you see a 35 uh, kPa effective stress placed on the sample with about a 14, 15 kPa head pressure. That's uh, 5 PSI and 2 PSI head pressure. You can go lower than that. There's some difficulties with doing that in the laboratory sometimes, depending on the equipment you have, but that's a good starting point. Um, it's also conservative in terms of flow because these tests take a long time time to get the leachate through them. We're talking about permeabilities in the mid minus 10 centimeter per second range when they start maybe a little slower, maybe a little faster. But this data series is really interesting. So we've uh, placed a, a polymer modified GCL in the permeameter chamber and it's starting off right here in the, the mid minus 11 uh, meter per second range. It takes a while for that to swell and to cut off flow as that leachate's passing through it. And it's going to take about, in this case, it takes about five pore volumes to drop down. And right at this point in the valley, at five pore volumes, we encounter something uh, which would allow a, 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 a test to be terminated, actually, by the standard. And something we're working really hard to correct within ASTM and that we're uh, collectively, as an academic community, uh, moving the industry in. And so these bottom three readings right here meet this first uh, uh, termination criteria in the standard. If you can get three readings in a row where there's no, you have steady state conditions and no significant upward or downward trend, and your inflow outflow ratios are within this huge range of, for inflow outflow ratios, you can pull the plug on that test and call that product good. Well, as this test goes on and we pass five pore volumes and we head for 30 pore volumes of flow through it, we have an ion exchange occur. Leachate's now, or the brine or the liquor is flowing through that specimen and we start to head up and find really steady state equilibrium and run that test out to uh, 180 pore volumes. And so at that flow rate, this test probably ran, I bet, close to a year to get that much flow through it, to make, to, to make this point. But the, the major point here is, is that these tests need to run until there's a significant amount of flow through it. And the ASTM group is hemming and hawing around 10 pour volumes right now. And really, ideally, you'd like to see 30 plus pour volumes. It's not always possible uh, to get that, but, but we try. So, so there's weaknesses within our standards uh, that need to be addressed. And one of the new ways that we can do this is prove stability through chemical equilibrium. Remember we talked about EC and pH uh, early on and we didn't pay a whole lot of attention to those numbers. This is where those two numbers come back into play and become important. As that test continues, if we follow these data, there's some buffering going on within the specimen, but as, as it continues and we hit 30 pore volumes, right where that hydraulic conductivity pore volume plot was starting to peak and level out, we see our, we see our inflow and effluent uh, pH and electric, electrical conductivity start to run asymptotically, and we're reaching a chemical equilibrium now. Our, our specimen has come to equilibrium with the leachate passing through it. We know we have arrived at a solution and we've really hit our final steady state hydraulic conductivity for that system. Right in the 40 pore volume range. Now, 
as this becomes more advanced, and what we're going to talk about in the later webinar series is we're beginning to look at individual species in our effluents and from our influence. And so in this case, we're looking at potassium, how much potassium is coming out of our specimen. We know that if we run this out to 100 pore volumes, now we're really starting to see the potassium reach equilibrium uh, further out. And so it's a much more advanced analysis, but it's a direction in which this family of geosynthetics is heading in terms of of determining equilibrium and will these products work in a certain situation. Mm -hmm.